Here's the diagram I wish someone had shown me when I was trying to figure out why a GFCI protected generator would trip every time you tried to backfeed a house. Let's get into why. Now you're going to have to excuse my crude drawings. It's the best I could do on Canva, but I think it'll be more than adequate enough to break down this semi-complex topic into something that's way more digestible and you'll be able to follow the flow of electricity. You'll have a better idea of what's going on in your particular situation. And just a quick disclaimer, this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Make sure to consult with your local licensed electrician before you make any changes to your electrical setup or if you have any questions or concerns uh, to you. I am just some guy on YouTube, so without further ado, let's get into the rest of this presentation. All right, what we're going to be looking at is why your GFCI protected generator keeps tripping every time you try to power something by backfeeding your house, either through a transfer switch here or through a main breaker with an interlock kit here. We're going to go over both diagrams. Um, the wiring is a little different, but the concept is going to be the exact same. Now, before we get started, there's two overarching things I want you to keep in mind, and that'll help everything make sense to you as we go along. The first thing is that electricity wants to create a circle or a circuit. It wants to start at the source go out and do work in an appliance and come back to the source. If that circuit or circle is broken, then work cannot get performed electrically. So make sure that things go out from the source and come back to the source. Now, keeping that in mind, a GFCI breaker or outlet, uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at a breaker, but a GFCI ground fault circuit interrupt breaker measures the outflow of the current and it measures the return current coming back. If there's a discrepancy between the two, it will trip and then it'll cut power from everything downstream of it. So again, electricity wants to go in a circle or a circuit and a GFCI breaker will measure what's going out, what's coming back, and if there's a difference, it trips. So let's get into this. With our GFCI uh, protected generator, we have our coils here creating our electricity inside. We have 120 volts here, 120 volts here on the black. So one on the red, one on the black creates 240 volts with a neutral tapped in the center. These three wires run through your GFCI protected breaker. From there, it goes to your 240 volt outlet, which would be attached to your generator. I just put it spaced out so you can see the wires going to it. Now you'd plug in your cord, which would be here, and then into your house, the inlet box here. Um, there is a ground wire that goes to the 240 volt outlet, but it does not pass through the GFCI breaker. It instead attaches internally to the generator. And then everything kind of metallic on the generator itself is all grounded. It's all attached kind of the same thing. Behind here though, we'll get to this later. So if you have questions about this, we'll jump into that in a minute. Let's just keep following the electricity downstream of the GFCI breaker. The electricity, you plug it into your inlet box here. And you have one hot lead that goes to this bus here and another one that goes to this bus here. So inside your breaker box, you got the, the buses that are kind of like this. And inside your transfer switch is kind of like a mini breaker box, but they're like this, like interlocking fingers. And then breakers kind of alternate in between each one. Now the electricity, we're going to power this appliance on the black one here. So let's pretend this is 120 volts, 7 amps perhaps coming out. And it will go through here. It will go down here and do work, correct? It will then come back up the neutral. And in a perfect world, we would assume it's going to flow through this neutral, through the outlet, back through the GFCI, and complete the circuit, since that's what it wants to do. It wants to leave and then come back, correct? Well, in this case, this is where we're going to have some issues with everything tripping. You have a bond here on the back of your GFCI protected generator. It's usually under the alternator cap. There's a jumper that goes from the ground to the neutral. And what this basically is, is it's a point at which the ground, everything here on the generator and the ground wire and the frame and everything, it makes contact with the neutral as an alternate source back to complete the circuit. Um, usually this is used when there is a fault in the system. But in this case, it's going to come back to bite us. And the reason for that is that we have a bond here, but if you look all the way on the right side, we have another bond here. Inside of your house at the main breaker, you're, uh, from your transfer switch, you're going to have a neutral wire that runs over to this neutral bus. And then uh, from this ground bus, you're going to have a wire that goes over to this ground bus. Well, inside of the main breaker, there's a bond. It's either going to be a screw or a bar that bonds these two and um, basically physically links them. So now you have one bond here and you have one bond here. And in a system, you can only have one. So now that we presented two, that's where our issue is going to be. It's going to create an alternate or a parallel path back to the source. You'll still complete the circuit, but not everything's going to be going where it should. So let's follow what's going on here. We have our seven amps going out on the black. 
comes down just like before, it does work. Seven amps goes up this neutral. It hits this neutral bus. Here's where it diverts. We're gonna have perhaps five amps that continue up the neutral through the outlet here, through the GFCI. So you have seven out and only five coming back. At this point, it's gonna trip. Where'd the other two go? The other two jumped over to this neutral bus across the bond to this ground bus back on the ground here. Ground as you're following it down here to the generator itself and it bounces back to the neutral point, the neutral bond right here. So again, at this point, as far as the coils are concerned, we have seven leaving and seven coming back, five and two, but seven coming out here. But as far as the GFCI is concerned, we only have seven going out and only five coming back. It creates that imbalance and it will trip each and every time. How do we fix this? Basically, you have to get rid of one of the bonds and um, I don't recommend doing it in the house. So the easiest way is to just remove the bond from the generator. Like I said, it's usually under the alternator cap. You just remove uh, the jumper and that'll take care of it. Consult with your manufacturer of your generator and the uh, manual and it'll probably say in there what you need to do. But let's take this out for a second and see what's going on. So now we have the electricity that leaves, comes down, does work, comes up the neutral and it all has to flow back on the neutral in this particular case. And that's because when it hits this neutral bus, it's not gonna jump over and across because there's no path back to the source. It it can't attach back to the neutral here. There's no bond, so everything's gonna be good to go. So just by removing that bond, more than likely your generator is gonna stay on and function as it should. Assuming that was your problem, which in many cases, that is the issue. Now let's take a look at what happens when we're using a main breaker with an interlock kit instead of the transfer switch. And basically the wiring's the same, we're just cutting out the middleman here. So the electricity is still gonna flow out the generator the same way as it did above, except in this case, we're gonna have the two hots running to a double pole breaker. And just as a reminder, inside of your breaker box, it's gonna be like interlocking fingers here that don't really touch. If you had a breaker on this finger, it would attach to this bus. If you had a breaker in between the knuckles, it would attach to this bus here. So a double pole breaker has a breaker here and a breaker in between. And so one feeds on this bus and one feeds on this bus. So when you back feed 240 volts back into it, it's gonna energize this bus and this bus as well. And then we have the neutral flowing through, attaching to the neutral bus and the ground attaching to the ground bus. Now the bottom breaker here, uh, since that's actually reaching over and touching this one right here, the black wire feeds here, it drops down onto this side and then down into the toaster. Let's, again, let's say it's seven amps, it does work and it comes back as seven amps through the neutral here until it hits this neutral bus. And once again, maybe five of it flows back through here and maybe two of it jumps across this bond to the ground, follows the ground wire all the way back to the bond once again where it completes the circuit. It just doesn't complete the circuit through the GFCI breaker. And once again, with that imbalance, it will trip it each and every time you try to do something. It will happen in a fraction of a millisecond before you even realize what's going on. Basically, you hook up your stuff and it trips hook up your stuff and it trips and you never get anything accomplished. So once again, if we were to remove this bond, for instance, now the electricity flows out, down, and back, and all of it has to come back on the neutral because there's no other path for it to connect back to complete the circuit. It can't jump across the bond and back because there's nowhere for it to go, it just dead ends. So electricity doesn't go to just dead end, it will go back to the source. If there are multiple paths back to the source, it will take the multiple paths back to the source. So hopefully this helped you out in understanding kind of what's going on with your particular situation. I kept it really rudimentary. We could hook up additional toasters and run electricity off of both of the buses inside of the transfer switch or on the main breaker here, but it's going to be the same. Yes, you're going to have some current going out and returning on the hots with a 240 volt system here. And then the difference between the two traveling back on the neutral. Uh, we're not going to get into the weeds of that. Basically, either way you slice it, is if you have this bond here on the generator and the bond here in the house, 
you're going to have some of the current coming back on the ground and it's going to be completing the circuit here instead of through the GFCI. That's always going to create an imbalance and that's always going to trip your uh, breaker and you won't be able to get anything done. So once again, consult with your local licensed electrician or your manual and your manufacturer of your generator and hopefully you can get this resolved for yourself. But that's just one place I would look if you're having this issue. If it helped you out, feel free to hit the like button down below. That'll help me out big time and I would be greatly appreciative of that. And other than that, have a great day. Take it easy, guys.